14 minutes past the hour now. The neighborhood watchman accused of killing an unarmed teenager is back behind bars on judge's order today. And now George Zimmerman wants a chance to explain himself. So says his lawyer. The judge in the controversial case revoked bond last Friday, saying George Zimmerman and his wife lied about their finances to get a lower bond. The defense attorney says it was a mistake, and he's seeking a new hearing to straighten things out with the judge. But in a case that really could hinge on Zimmerman's account of what happened, some of the legal experts are saying this latest development could hurt his credibility and badly. Remember, he claims he shot then 17 year old Trayvon Martin in self defense. Prosecutors say Zimmerman was the aggressor. With us now, Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. How do you see this? Well, in reading the events, in reading the transcripts of the events that happened in court on Friday, we learned that it was Mrs. Zimmerman. George's wife, who made the statements that we now know were inaccurate. And the allegation against George is that he remained silent while his wife gave knowingly false information about the state of their finances. What was false about their finances was that there was about uh, between $135,000 and $150,000 that had been collected through a, um, a, a defense fund where ordinary folks could use their credit cards and PayPal on these various paying mechanisms and send money to him, and that money had been accumulated. He will probably say, I didn't know that I could use this for my bail, and she'll probably say the same thing. But here's the interesting part from the point of view of a judge. He's being punished because what his wife said. Now, the prosecutor will say, well, he shouldn't have sat there silently while the wife gave improper and incorrect information to the judge. Well, yes, he can. It's a criminal case, and he never has to say anything. He has a right to remain silent. If he got on the stand and under oath affirmatively misled the judge, that's a different story. But for him to sit silently by, protected by the Fifth Amendment, where he never has to say a word, shouldn't be punished for it. Bail should be revoked because of behavior of the defendant after bail has been granted, not because of some facts that came to light that the government should have known about before bail was granted. But the way the government would have learned, it's my understanding, is through either the defendant or his attorney, and neither his def the defendant or his attorney mentioned what they absolutely knew, and that was that there was this brand new pile of bright and shiny money that came from elsewhere. They didn't say it, and it's that money that is in large part what decides how much bail may or may not be? Well, yes, but remember, the purpose of bail is to assure that the defendant shows up in court when the court needs right. him. We, we, we all know that. If the government comes in and says, we have reason to believe he's not going to show up because he's going to take this money and, and go to a country with which we don't have an extradition treaty, that's one thing. But for them to say, you know, he's behaving fine, he shows up when we need him, but the money in, in the court's account isn't enough. We want the bail to go up because we found out he's richer than he is. That's a waste of the court's time. You've said this is grandstanding on the part of the government. I do think it's grandstanding on the part of the government. The government likes to take things like a private conversation with one's wife that is being recorded and, and expose that so that it can use it as an instrument with which to cross-examine him. They had a crazy conversation. Nobody knows what they were talking about because it was in code. It simply doesn't make sense. Maybe they were speaking in code. Maybe they were speaking about money. So the government publishes that conversation to the judge and says, he's inherently untrustworthy. Just look at this conversation. Well, anybody reading the conversation would know something crazy is going on. But it's between a husband and a wife. It doesn't have to do with the court.